I think this is a great feature piece, not a great yeah. slam piece. I feel then that. he says, one thing I always try is to make my poems as easy to digest as possible. Mm -hmm. Although I appreciate good vocabulary and references, sometimes making obscure references can only really affect. Yeah. So this speaks to um, the art of storytelling, where when you're storytelling live, you really only have like then and now for a person to get it. Unlike page poetry, where a person can reread a poem, stage poetry on the hand is like, going through the oral traditions like there's certain mechanics of oral delivery that you have to account for um and the fact that the people do not have the luxury of rewinding a performance right it's only there and now that i can hear this so boom i wanted to hear but at the same time there's something to be said about like you know a cryptic punchline that yeah. when you hit it's like whoa it's like a fucking room shaker it's like holy shit so it's it's a gamble. It's a big gamble. If you There's know your room, too. yeah, know yeah. your room, and you can also preface it right. Like uh, I do a couple reference pieces where I go in deep. Like I have a hip hop, like punk rock piece that I do, and it's all just deep cut references. But that's kind of the bit, you know what I'm saying? To where it's like, uh, and like Esther has the ability to do that too. Like we see in her round three, where it's essentially her being like, "I'm about to do a magic." So and then so she does it. So you, you you have a calibration piece, but in a slam, are you willing to do a calibration piece for your round one? It's like, oh, can you can you yeah, gauge the room with your round one? Like, you know, it's no, it's tactics, you, right? You. But no, your room too. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it too. Like, because it's hit or miss. But yeah, I feel you. Like, yeah. 